Today's stuff we're going to be learning is Bava Metzia Daf Ayin Tet. We're going to get started at the top of Ayin Tet Amud Aleph. What we saw yesterday is that we had a machlok at Rav and Shmuel about the Angaria, the Angaria, where somebody seizes the donkey, and we had a machlok at Rav and Shmuel. Rav said it depends whether it's the kind of Angaria that you'll get the animal back, and if so, that's when the the one who rented it to you just says, "Sorry, you're tough luck," or whether it's an angaria that actually is going to ret- is not going to return the animal, and then you can actually be provided with a new donkey. And that was how we saw there was a contradiction between our mission and a bright, and we resolved it like Rav by saying chozeret and ain't a One is this case, one is that. But Shmuel had said no, that wasn't the difference between the 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 case in our Mishnah. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's chozeret or ain't a chozeret. The issue really is. Are, is it going in the direction that you're going, or was the was the king taking it in a different direction, or was it found outside, or was it found inside the house? Were you walking around on the streets? That was Rabbeinu Hanal's interpretation of Shmuel. If you're wandering on the streets, well, the, you shouldn't have the donkey outside. That's where the king's people often seize animals, and it's your fault for being on the street. Then he could say, sorry, tough luck. But if you had it inside, and they took it anyway, well, then there was nothing you, that the renter could have done, and the renter is provided with a new donkey. Then we said, but wait, there's a Braita that seems to say that distinction only according to Rabbi Shem ben Lazar, but not Tanakama. So how could that be? We had two explanations. Either Shmuel says, oh, I just hold like Rabbi Shem ben Lazar, or we reread the Braita and saying, actually, it's all one opinion. The whole Braita is Rabbi Shem ben Lazar. We had to change some words and, and add an extra word, but we could claim that that's the Braita. And then that fits perfectly with Shmuel, because Rosh Lazar exactly distinguished the distinction that, and made the distinction that Shmuel said. Now we're going to go to a problem with this second answer. Third, fourth line on today's stuff. Can you really establish the case like Rosh Shem ben Lazar, the whole Braita? The Hakatanigaisha, in the beginning part of that Braita, it says, The animal goes blind or um, goes crazy, or again, depending on what Eureka is. Omer lo It says, you know, you're stuck. Nothing to do. The owner doesn't have to replace it. V'il Rabbi Shimon ben Lazar Amar, now he himself says, Hasochir ta'chamor l'rkovala, if you rent a donkey to ride on it, V'ivrika, Oshin ishtatata, exactly the same case, and that happened to it. Chayav l'amid lo chamor, you have to replace it. So if the beginning of the bright has said you don't have to replace it, the, the owner of the donkey doesn't need to bring you a new donkey, and Rabbi Shimon Lazar says you do, the owner of the donkey has to replace it, well, that can't be that that bright all holds like Rabbi Shimon Lazar. It clearly contradicts. To which we're going to have an answer. Now you rent a donkey for two different reasons, for two different purposes. Either you want to ride on the donkey or you want to carry a heavy load on the donkey. Now, you can say that the Brighton was talking about carrying a heavy load. And this Brighton that we just quoted with Rabbi Shimon Lazar specifically says you rent it to ride on it. Renting to ride is very different because if you rent it to ride on it and the animal goes blind or crazy, you're going to fall into a ditch and get injured or maybe die, right? There's no way to control the animal. But if you're leading the animal and it's carrying a burden on it and you're leading it, you can have it avoid ditches, holes, other things. You can basically prevent that from, you know, from, uh, prevent that accident. So then they don't have to give you a new chamor because uh, deal with it. Okay. So Amor of Papa, he just adds another point, which is if you're carrying glass vessels, which are very fragile, then it's really the same as riding on it. Because in that case, they're definitely going to break if the animal's a li- a somewhat unstable or a little crazy. Amarav Barav Huna Amarav. We're now moving to a new halacha, quoted by the name of Rav. I rent a donkey to ride on it. I want to get from New York to Boston. So I rent a donkey or I rent a car and I want to get there. I get to Connecticut and the car breaks down and now I'm stuck. I have to teach a shear tonight in Boston and I can't get there. So now the question is, well, can I or not? And let's see. What's the law, according to Rav? Okay, assuming you rent a car by the hour or by the miles. So let's say you rent it by mileage. So I have to pay for the mileage I got from New York to Connecticut. I have to pay the owner of the rental car company for the beginning part of the ride. 
ואין לו עליו אלא תאומות. And all I could do is really just complain to the rental company and say, you know, this is really a bit of a pain in the neck, but they don't have to give me any money back. And I just obviously don't pay for the half that I didn't make it for. To which the Gemara says, hey, Chidami, what exactly is the case? Now we're going to start by splitting it into, is it this or that? And then is it this or that? It's kind of like a flow chart. So two options on a flow chart. Either I can find another car. In Connecticut, there's car rental car companies on every corner. No problem. Go rent a new car, and I get it. But that, then I don't even have a complaint. If I can easily find another donkey to rent, taroma my I don't have anything to complain about. Just go rent a new car, rent a new donkey, and get there. If I can't get there because I can't find another donkey. Now, I had a shear in Boston. I didn't need to be in Connecticut. You got me to Connecticut, but that doesn't help me. I'm stuck in Connecticut. I have nothing to do here. And, right, number one, I'd probably rather be back home at this point if I can't make it to Boston. So, Agra Bayelimei why do I have to pay you for the half, for the mileage I got that got me to Connecticut? To which the Gemara answers, no, let's explain it like this. Really, the last option was accurate. I really can't find uh, anywhere, anyone to rent me the car. I still have to pay you, why? Sorry, I should read it better. If you had asked, let's, the, the rental car company could say, listen, Michelle, if you had rented a car to get from New York to Connecticut, would you have had to pay? Of course. So, if you had wanted to rent just from New York to Connecticut, what do you need to pay for that? In other words, for me, as the person who's trying to get to Boston, who has to give a shear there, getting to Connecticut is really useless for me. But for you, as a car rental car company, you rent cars from people who take them from New York to Connecticut all the time. That's worth something to you. Your donkey was used to get to Connecticut. I have to, I have to compensate you for that. So that's why I have to pay. But we're still going to have more questions here. Because what? Hey, Chidami. What exactly? Let's talk about another detail of this. When I rented a car, did I rent specifically a guy to go to the rental car company and say, I want this car and this car only. This is the only car I'm willing to rent. And I need to show up in a, in a, in a fancy car, let's say, okay? I, I went, and this is your only fancy car. I want this one. Or did I just say, I, I don't care what car, any car. I just need to get there. So, hey, Chidami, Ida Amrle Chamor Stam, if I said, I don't care what donkey you give me. I don't care what car. I just need a car to get to Boston. Well, then, then actually, you should have to replace it. If I needed to get to Boston and I can't find anywhere to rent along the way, right? There's no other rental car companies in Connecticut. And I just said I want any donkey. Well, you should have to provide me then with a donkey because I rented it for a particular purpose and I didn't get what I wanted. But if I said specifically, I want this donkey only, then what should I do? If I can sell the carcass of the donkey, okay, because if I said I wanted this donkey, then theoretically right now, all the time that I'm renting this donkey or this car, this car or donkey is mine, so to speak, to the extent that what can I do? And this is going to be a question. What What's the extent of what I can do with it? Well, if I can buy another donkey with it. Now, there might not be rental car places, but I can buy a donkey. So if I could buy a donkey with the money, I buy a donkey. And then I take that donkey, I use it, and then I return it to you later to the rental car company. So that should work. So again, back to square one. We don't seem to have an issue here where why should I pay half and have a tarot mitt? Either I wanted any donkey and then you should replace it for me, or I could kind of replace it myself by selling the donkey and getting myself a new donkey and then returning it to you after. To which the Gemara says, wait, we're going to tell you a case where this isn't going to work and where again, those two aren't options in the end. What are we going to say? You have to pay for the part that you got from New York to Connecticut and you're, you can complain. Okay, but that's it. Just to complain. So, it must be, I can't sell it. Okay, so now I'm stuck. I can't get to where I get to. So I can complain because I can't give the shear tonight in Boston. But 
what I can't do is I can't do any, and what I do have to do is though, I do have to pay you for the fact that I got to Connecticut because in the end, I use your donkey, got to Connecticut and that's worth money to you. So now they say, wait, but why didn't Rav give the possibility of, okay, the dead animal is not enough to buy me a new animal, but maybe it's enough, right? Obviously, it would have, it would have only been enough anyway to buy me a less good animal, but at least it would be something. But maybe I should be able to rent another donkey with that money because renting costs less. It's a bit of a problem because we said there isn't an option to rent, so it's a good question why, why they even suggest this, but they say, Rav Latame, Rav didn't even raise this as a possibility because to Amar Rav, Lo Machlin and Karna. Rav says, um, we, you can't do that. If I rent your donkey and I wanted only this donkey and I have rights to that donkey, I have rights to a certain extent. I can't just sell it to the extent that I can turn it into, I can sell the dead animal, take the money and put it into a rental where it's going to disappear. So I'm causing the principle of it to disappear. I can't do that with your item. How do we know this? Because actually, it says that Rav and Shmuel debate this point. If you rent a donkey and it dies halfway, I can buy a donkey with it, but I can't rent a donkey because if I rent a donkey, I'll have nothing to return to you. That far, I can't go. Shmuel Shmuel says, if you can, I can rent. I can take that dead animal. Because I said, Kamorze, it's mine, so to speak. I can take it, I can sell it, I can rent it. Because at the end, I had a rental agreement with you that I was supposed to get to Boston and I could use it to get to Boston. But Rav doesn't think so. My Kamifli, what's the root of their machloket? Rav Savar lo machlin and karna, Ushmo Savar machlin and karna. Rav says, you can't use up the principle, and Shmuel says, you can't. Metive. Now we're going to have a difficulty from a Braita. This Braita is about a case where I loaned you money. And I got a collateral from you. What did I get? I got rights to a tree, rights to the fruits of the tree. And we did, Rashi says, a mashkanta de sura. If you remember, that's where we make an arrangement where I basically say that you say this tree is yours, but it's not really mine. It's mine as a mashkon. I can eat the fruits. And after 10 years, if you don't pay me back the loan, I've eaten enough fruits. We basically assess the 10 years is approximately the amount that will cover the loan. And in 10 years, you can get your land back automatically, even if you don't pay anything. So I have rights to the fruit. But what happened in this case? Yavesha ilan oniktsats. The tree dried up, no more fruits, or it got cut down. And now all that's left is wood. Now what's the problem? Shneham is a limbo. Nobody can do anything with the wood because it's the wood doesn't belong to me. The wood belongs to you. But what? But I have rights to the fruits. So while it's in my possession, the whole tree, you can't have it either because I have rights to the fruits. Now, there are no fruits right now, but the tree is really mine for 10 years and you'll get it back in 10 years. So Kate Sadia said, what do we do? I buy land. I take the wood. I sell it to someone who wants wood. I take the money. I buy a small piece of land. Probably won't get me too much, but I buy a small piece of land and any produce I create from that land, I can enjoy. And at the end of the 10 years, I'll give you back the land. And that way, what do you see here? I don't get rid of the principle. Now, they say the following though, but wait, this is going to be a difficulty with Rav. Why? Buying land, who says it's not Kaliakarna? It doesn't, what do you mean it doesn't get rid of the principle? It will eventually because what? When the Jubilee year comes, what happens? All the land goes back to its original owner. So if I buy a piece of land, this land will not be permanently in my possession, which will then go permanently back to the borrower's possession. The land will go back to its owner, the Kakalia Karna, and it will get rid of, I'll have ruined the principal. So, right, perhaps I need to return you the wood, even though I can't really because the wood is mine right now, but it's a problem. To which they say, First answer, could be I sold, I bought the land for 60 years. Now, why does that help? Well, if I sell land for 60 years, if I buy land for 60 years, it won't go back to its original owner. Why? In other words, what we've done here is we found a case where the Jubilee year won't kick in, and that'll be great because then, low call your karna. Now, you might be thinking, what do you mean? It's going to go back in 60 years. So what if it goes back in 50 years, 60 years? 
and we're going to get there and reject this answer. It's a bad answer. But right now we're going to explain why would the 60 years help? Because it says, the land should not be sold forever. That's why we have the Jubilee year. Land shouldn't be sold forever. So what do we learn from this? It would only be applying to a land that without the Jubilee year, it would have been sold forever. And therefore, Yesham Yovel, Yovel and Nitzmetet. And that's why the Jubilee year comes in and says, this won't be sold forever. But yet, Stazo, but it's not relevant to a case it won't be permanent were it not for Yovel. And if I sold it for 60 years, then it's not a permanent sale. So the Jubilee year won't kick in there, and therefore that would be our answer. But the Gemara says that's a bad answer because, as I said before, but 60 years pass and the land's going to go back. So that doesn't help. It's also Kali Yakarna case. So, Rav, how are you going to write the Kali Yakarna? How's Rav going to explain this case? Right, this bright has to fit in with Rav. So they say, second answer It must be you buy this piece of land, and that resolves the problem because the land will go back to its, to the borrower when the mashkant is up, and that way you haven't destroyed the karen, and that gives the the malve again a way to eat the fruits, the produce for the oh, those years, and it gives the love right. He won't get as much, obviously, or she won't get as much because the fruit's not how much you know can you plant. Well, maybe you can plant a tree in a small piece of land. I guess you could, but it might take some years till it starts bearing fruit. In any case, you'll get some sort of produce from there. Maybe you'll plant vegetables that grow quicker. Anyway, you'll get some sort of produce, and originally, and eventually the lova will get their land back. And it won't go back in the jubilee year because there is no jubilee year. And in fact, we're going to further prove this. Hachinami mistabra de Esau kadata. Because if you sell, said this bright to prove Rav is wrong and Shmuel is right, then, and it's Bizman Shayovel Noheg, and the Jubilee year is, is actually working. Umachlin and Karna, and you say like Shmuel, that you can get rid of the Karen. It's not a problem. Well, then, Well, if that's the case, then you wouldn't need to buy land because you have a better, easier solution. If basically the Malva is living on this property or, or using this, this tree, for the fruits. It all gets destroyed, right? Or right now it's not going to grow fruits anymore. But the, the Malvik can take what's left. If they have the rights, like your tree failed on me, just like your donkey died or your car crashed or not crashed, uh, broke down. So now if I could get rid of the Karen to replace what I was supposed to have for all those years, I should be able to burn the wood and use it as, as firewood. And that's the easiest solution for me. But they don't give me that option. What do you see from here? It's it's right. It's you can't explain it. That this proof that it could be right. This is basically proving it must be right that it is Rav, and Rav can support his reading from here. To which the Gemara says, no, that's not a good proof. Okay, we still could have our answer, but the, the proof of the answer that this is how Rav would explain the source. It's not clear cut that this follows Rav and not Shmuel. Again, the whole thing was. If it was Shmuel, there's a much easier thing, which is just use the wood and be done with it. But, because Shmuel doesn't have a problem with you finishing up the principle. But Imi Shumhalo Kashia, no, that's not a difficulty about this whole thing. If it was, it's when the Yovel, when the Jubilee year, and you could just say Machlina and Karna. No. Zimnin Deshalm Ushne Mashkanta Makame Yovel. Inami Dematu Lezuze Uparakle Arbaba Chame Shani Makame Yovel. What does this mean? This is basically saying, even Shmuel would agree. For me, as the Malve, and even for the Lova, I'm better off, even if I can get rid of the principle, I'm better off coming with a solution. The easiest solution is not necessarily the best solution. And that's why the easiest solution wasn't mentioned, because even though it's the easiest, it's not the best. Shmuel, who says you can actually be calling a Karna, still could say better to buy land because perhaps you'll be able to return the land to the Lova because perhaps the land will come, the, the 10 years will be up before the Jubilee year. Or perhaps... You might come up with the money to pay me back before the Jubilee year kicks in. Let's say the 10th year, or it's already the Jubilee year, but maybe you'll pay early. And then you'll have an option to at least get something back. So better to do that. So in the end, we brought this source of difficulty for Rav. In the end said, well, actually, can it, 
Yeah. We gave two answers to Rav. The first one we rejected that you sold it for 60 years. In the end, we said maybe it's just a time when the Jubilee year isn't effective. Like nowadays, right? We don't have Jubilee year anymore. Ended a long time before. Even their time, the time of the Gemara, there was no Jubilee year. In any case, we tried to prove it because why didn't they just say use the wood yourself for the Malva to use the wood? But then we said no because even Shmuel would agree. And then we could explain the Brighta both according to Rav and according to Shmuel. Tanu Rabbana, new Brighta. Similar case. You rent a boat and it sinks in the middle. So what do you do? Rabbi Natan Omer, Im Natan, Lo Yito. Vim Lo Natan, Lo Yite. We're obviously talking about you're not on the boat and you didn't die with it, but you must have rented the boat to carry produce from one place to another and the boat sinks. So now we're assuming that you're bringing wine on the boat. So now we're going to go back to this did you specify which wine? Did you specify which boat that you wanted? And we'll, we'll see. So first, Rabbi Natan says, Im Natan lo yitol, im lo natan lo yitain. What does that mean? If I already paid you the rent up front, then I don't take it back. If I didn't give you, then I don't have to give it to you. This is what we call hamotzi mechaver or alaf haraya, or we leave the status quo. In other words, each side is not going to be able to prove that they're right fully. So therefore, like each one's going to have a claim. Therefore, we leave the money wherever it is. We don't move the money from wherever it is. If you pay it up front, tough luck. If you didn't pay anything, you don't have to pay at all. So, hechidami, what's the case? If I said I wanted this boat only, and this boat no longer exists. Now, you can't provide me with a new boat because the boat I wanted was this one only. And I don't care what wine, though. I just wanted, I wanted this boat, but I just wanted any wine to, to get me. Now, the boat is yours, the wine is mine. So now, let's go through this. Im natan, if I already give the money, am I lo yitol? I actually should be able to get my money back because what did I say? Name alei hav lisvinta da'ana maitina chamra. I didn't care what wine I was bringing across. I'll just buy new wine. And now I want to bring it across the river, but give me a boat, right? I want that boat. And you say, well, I can't give you that boat because you don't have that boat. So I basically say, oh, if you don't have that boat to give me, well, you didn't do what I wanted. So, give me my money back. If I say, I don't care what boat I use, but I wanted this wine to get across to the other side, and now this wine is gone, and there's nothing I could do. Well, in lo natana, my lo yitin. If I haven't paid you yet, why shouldn't I have to pay you right now? And now we're moving to Amu Bet. Because name and here's the reverse of the previous. You can say to me as the owner of the boat, listen, havli ahu chamra, Go bring me the wine you wanted to bring, which of course doesn't exist. Well, you wanted just any boat from me. I'll give you a new boat. Here, here's a boat. Go bring your wine. Oh, you don't have wine because that was the wine you wanted and your wine is gone? Uh, that's your fault. So you defaulted on me. You have to pay me. So now we don't understand Rabbi Natan because either which way it shouldn't work. So Amara Papa, Lomishkachala Ela Bisfina Zovi It must be the cases where I said I wanted this boat and I wanted this wine and now each of us is at fault because you you no longer have a boat to give me because I wanted that boat and I no longer have wine to bring because I wanted that wine so that's why we just leave everything where it is we leave the money whoever's got the money they keep the money here's the fourth permutation we both said neither of us cared I'll take any boat I'll take any wine over or across the river Holkin. in that case we split a 50-50 because that's what we call mamona mutalba safek, right? It's not clear. In other words, each one theoretically could bring, everyone's really wrong, and therefore we, we put the money back in a pot and we split a 50 50. Okay? Um, so now we're going to move on to another brighta. Tanu Rabbanan. Hasokher et hasfina uparkala bechatsi We I rent a boat, and then I take all the goods off halfway through. Notelo scharoshal chatsi So now, Basically, I renege on, in all the other cases, right, you're, or, well, it's unclear. You could say I was at fault for some of them. That was what we just discussed. But here, I take off my stuff halfway, and I'm not interested in taking it the rest of the way. I have to pay for the half. Okay, I took the boat halfway across the water. And the, the person who rented it to me could just complain that I didn't give them the full job that I had committed to from the beginning. So again, what exactly is the case? Ilema, we've had the same structure throughout all the cases today, which is why? Why why do we say it's only a taromet? 
should be more or should be less. If you can find someone else to rent it to, then you shouldn't complain because you could just find someone else to rent it for the other half. If you can't find anyone to rent it, then I should have to pay you for the whole thing because I committed. Actually, you can find someone. Ella, amai eat le taromet. What's the reason why you can complain? Mishum rafsida desfinata. Well, actually, you're causing more work. Let's say it's me. I took off my stuff in the middle, and now you find someone else to put their stuff on. So someone else puts their cargo on the ship. Well, that's wear and tear on the ship because I put my stuff in, I took it out. Someone else came, put it in, took it out. It's much less wear and tear if I put my stuff and go the whole way rather than two people. And that was the deal from the beginning. To which they say, What do you mean? If I did wear and tear in your boat, then that actually has financial value. And in which case, I should have to reimburse you for the wear and tear on your boat, for the depreciation from having someone else put more stuff on your boat. Ella, so now they understand the case differently than we thought in the first place. We thought parka meant I took off my stuff halfway. My parka, de parka litoane bigave. I actually added more stuff when we got halfway. I told you I was taking 500 pounds of whatever it is in the boat. And then midway, I decided to add another 200 pounds worth of stuff. Okay, elamai taromet. Well, what's the problem here? Mishum shuinu data. Well, because... It's, um, one second, tune because right, I added more things. Yeah. So now, right, hold on, it's hard to separate. Right. So now they say, they say, Rashi says, what's this Mishum Shinoi Da'at? I thought that it was going to go quick. And the owner of the boat thought this was going to be a quick boat ride. Take the stuff to one side. And now we had to stop and put more stuff on. And plus it's heavier takes longer to go, that could be the taromit that they have. Inami, so it's just a loss of time, which here they don't say time is money, even though we usually do, at least according to Raj's interpretation, was a time issue. Inami la'ashli yatera. Could be you had to buy more ropes to tie the stuff down. Okay, and that's why um, you didn't tell me that I needed to bring those, those ropes. So it could be you compensate him for the ropes, but... You didn't know that I was going to need to bring them. That also caused some extra time. So it seems like from Rashi. Tanu Rabbanan, new Brita. Hasokher, right? This is just a slew of Brita here of all different cases of people changing their minds. Hasokher tachamor lirkovalahem. Okay, now here's a different thing actually, not changing minds. This is a matter of what's part of the arrangement. When I rent something from you, I rent a donkey to ride on. So how much weight can I put on that donkey? On that donkey? So if I rent it to get rid, driven somewhere, I can put my clothes on there. I can put my, my jug of water that I have to drink or whatever I'm drinking and my food for the whole way. If it takes a few days, I can take a few days food, worth of food. But After that, the donkey rider could say, that's too much weight. My, right? First of all, I'll, it'll take me longer to get there. And it's not good for my donkey. Hamar, what can the donkey rider put on the donkey? Well, I also want to get there quickly. Now, if you, as the donkey rider, start adding all this food for the donkey, it's going to weigh down the donkey even more and it's going to take me longer. So you're allowed to bring one day's worth of food, not the whole journey, just one day. We're going to have to figure out why this is for the animal. After that, right, I can insist no way, no how. So now what's the case? E, again, we're back to this class. Can, can you find food on the way? Can you not find food? If it's easy to find food, so then I shouldn't be able to bring my food for the whole drive, right? I should have to get food daily, fill up. If it's hard to find food on the way, so Well, then how can I stop you from putting on food for the donkey if we're not going to be able to find food on the way? Well, we're not going to starve the donkey. It's a case where every night we rest, and at every rest stop at night, there is actually food to get. So why do we distinguish between the donkey drive rider and me? 
because Hamar Adarke Lemitrach Ulamizban, a donkey rider is generally, it, it's not beneath their respect. Like, they, first of all, they're always living on the road. They have no problem to just ask people, where can I get food? Where can I get food? They're used to being in all sorts of new places. So, but I'm just a regular person who normally is in my house. My, you know, my wife makes me dinner, let's say, or, you know, I make dinner, whatever it is. And, and basically, I'm not used to asking around and trying to find food. So we allow me to bring all my food for the trip. But the donkey rider, right, you think of bus drivers, right? They're used to rest stops all the time. That's what they do. They're always like finding food, what they need for the next, next while. So they can only bring one day's worth. If you rent a donkey to have a man ride upon it, you can't have a woman ride upon it. There seems to be from the commentary some assumption that the women rode differently. Okay, sometimes maybe they side, they sat on the side. We had a sugi about that in Sachim um, for new reasons. And that was not as comfortable for the donkey. It was more wearing, it was just un- discomfort for the donkey. So because of that, if a woman cannot go if if the um, if it was the arrangement was for a man but but if you made an arrangement with a woman obviously then it would be okay for a man because that wouldn't um, that wouldn't be any worse for the donkey the shot and with a woman bang Zolao bank now we don't distinguish whether she's heavy thin it, it, that whole issue that's not the issue it's not the weight issue per se. This is kind of funny, even if she's pregnant and then it's, you know, one plus. Or a filuminika, which is really one plus one, right? She's got a woman who's nursing and a baby with her. So the Gemara says, there's something weird about this source. Well, if you said nursing woman, which is two people, obviously, right, we're talking again about how much weight the animal can bear. Obviously, a pregnant woman who's one plus, but not as heavy as the woman with the baby out, um, where there's then two people, right? You wouldn't even need to ask that question. So I'm a papa, kind of funny discussion about pregnant women and, and you know, women when they're nursing. I'm a papa, me'uberet vehimini kakamar. What they mean to say is, here's a funny, right? She's both pregnant and nursing, and even that is allowed. She's got one plus, right? Plus another one. I'm rabbi, and here we end with kind of a funny line. Shmamina, benita akarsa takla. When we measure, when we, Go by fish, the weight is all in the stomach, and that's what they're pointing out here because the woman, the pregnant woman, it's all in her stomach. The weight is on the stomach. Why is this relevant? Okay, what do they mean by this? So, what they seem to mean here is that if I buy a fish and they're going to weigh it and go by the weight, I'm going to ask them to take out the stomach first, or particularly if the stomach's very big and, and the current has good footnote where they talk about that when the fish are mating, when they're in the, the season where the eggs are being produced, here the during the reproductive season, when certain species, species of fish carry a huge number of eggs, which are a significant part of their weight, and they're all in the stomach area. So it means if you're buying a piece of fish, and it's during that season, and the, or you see that the stomach is very big, make them take that out, because that's all stuff that's going to go in the garbage, and make them take it out before they weigh the fish. Okay? So that's a relevant detail, by the way. Once you take the Koran, it's a footnote it has a much better connection to the pregnant woman and the pregnant fish or the re- right during its reproductive cycle it makes a little bit more sense. Um, what, what this connection is otherwise it's kind of a bizarre connection. Okay. With that, we end and we end this section. We'll start a new Mishnah tomorrow. Uh, similar to some other things we've seen before about kind of misusing something you rent it for one purpose and then you use it for another purpose. So just to review what we did today, we finished up the issue of could that right to really be Rabbi Shem Azar to answer the question of Shmuel. We had a bit of a problem to say that it is, but we've resolved it. We went on to this halacha of Rav about a donkey that dies in the middle of the ride and what the halacha is. And then we had to, took a while to figure out exactly what case Rav was talking about because why does it say you have to pay for that first half and you just get to complain? Then we saw similar cases with the boat and we saw Rabbi Natan's approach that the money just stays where it is. You pay the rent, you don't return it. If you didn't pay the rent, you leave, right? You you, if you paid the rent, you don't get it back. If you didn't pay the rent, you don't pay it. And then we had to explain what that case was. We ended up saying it's Yain Ze and, and Sfinazo, where you wanted specifically that wine and specifically that boat. Otherwise, the hot luck would be different. And we went through all the different permutations. Then we had the, the boat sinking in the middle. And then we said you pay for the half. Uh, sorry, we had the boat where you took the 
the stuff off the boat, and then we said, right, and then we said it wasn't, you put, took the stuff off the boat, you actually added some stuff to the boat, um, and then we said, um, in a second, I just want to see one more thing, yeah, and then we went on to um, what you're allowed to put on the donkey, and then who you're allowed to put on the donkey, okay, based on your original arrangement. When we got with that, to pregnant women, nursing women, and all that, and even a pregnant nursing woman. With that, we finished for today. Wishing everyone a good day and a Shabbat Shalom.